So we are continuing our exploration of basic regular expression and their usage in the graph tool with this uh, this next video. This time we are going to, to focus on how to repeat uh, patterns. Okay, so we have learned to express quite a few patterns. Uh, one of the last patterns we expressed was using the character class digit, and we wanted to say you know I want else followed by three digits, and we didn't really have a way to to write this uh, in a, in a convenient manner. So we had to write digit followed by digit followed by digit, and the, the notation was kind of a little awkward. So let's try to do the same uh, work here. So data file. Uh, we wanted, I think, to match else followed by. So I'm going to repeat it right now just to show you. Uh, followed by digit, followed by digit, followed by digit. Okay. So this allowed me to match, for example, else 359. Okay, great. Uh, now what I want to do is I want to use a, a more concise notation. I want to s find a way to say I want possibly a digit uh, repeated three times. Okay. So we have this notation here, this range notation using the curly brace, the backslash curly braces. Okay. Uh, and this range notation, uh, as you can see, can take one number. So if I put inside those uh, those range, you know, curly braces, a uh, value n. That means I want to repeat exactly n times uh, the pattern that precedes. So let's take a an example here. What if I take this regular expression, I say the first digit, and I say I want to repeat it three times. Okay, there we go. What if I say I want to repeat it two times? Well, that means else followed by a digit, followed by another digit. So you are going to realize here that um, that the repeat pattern applies to the previous uh, part of the regular expression here. Okay, So this is a character class. Because I follow it immediately by, uh, by this notation, that means that I am matching actually two times this uh, character class following else. But I'm not repeating else two times. Okay, so It's really important to understand there. Now this uh, notation acts like a, like a range, um, meaning that we can specify uh, exactly n times. Or we can use a comma here to specify that we are going to do at least n times but possibly more times. So let's take a look at this one too. Like if I say two uh, comma that means two or more. So two or more means three included, right? So this is great. Uh, if I did one or more that would mean uh, one character. So you can see that I have more matches here else that was followed by a single digit. So one digit or two, or three digits, okay, or four, or five, or six, unlimited. So um, th this concept of range is going to be obviously applied uh, different ways. Okay, so I can uh, specify a lower bound. Uh, I'm going to skip ahead here and say I can specify a full range. Okay, so I can say uh, I am able to match uh, between one and three digits. I'm going to try this. See here say one and three digits. Okay, so that means um, that puts an upper bound pretty much in my previous example. Instead of saying at least one, okay, now I say I can match one, two, or three, and that's it. Okay, so if I was specifying one and two here, you could see that uh, else 359 didn't get matched completely. Okay, I match the word else and then three and five. So let's go back to the, to the slide. So I talked about this uh, this full range here. I talked about this uh, exactly n time and then at least n time. Let's talk about the two uh, remaining uh, syntax here. Um, they are equivalent. They are equivalent, however, they are not necessarily supported in all implementation of graph. I mean, both of them are not necessarily su uh, su supported. The idea here is that I want to fix an upper bound, uh, but I want to be able to go as low as zero. So the obvious way to specify this is to say I want uh, this is between zero and two uh, digits. So all the matches here that have zero digits following else are there. Um, then the ones that have one digit, the ones that have two digits. Okay. Uh, in some implementation, you are able to skip this number and just put the comma. Or in this case, it seems to be working. Uh, that allows you to just pretty much simplify a little bit the, the notation. Now, there is another way to simplify the notation, at least one of them when we're using just basic regular expression. 
When we are using extended regular expression, we are going to introduce more symbols that can more easily reflect the, the, the scenario. But right now, the only one we have here is uh, the star. The star, uh, not to be confused with uh, the stars, the way it's used, you know, when you try to, to match a file name uh, with the ls command, for example, ls star dot dot txt is a, is a way on DOS and uh, and uh, Unix shells to say I want to 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 have all the file names in my current working directory that uh, have any name followed by dot and the suffix uh, the suffix uh, txt. Um, so that's a totally different context. Okay, regular expression use a star symbol, but they don't use it the same way. In this case, the star symbol does not match anything by itself. Just like the, the those notation here do not match anything by themselves, okay? They just repeat the previous regular expression pattern a certain number of times. So same thing for the star. The star stands for zero or more times, okay? So it c it makes things optional. You can match them zero times, which means, for example, in our case, there are no digits, or one or two or three, etc., unlimited number of digits. So let's try to do this here going to use digits. So the, sim the notation is a lot better, right? It's a lot shorter to use that special symbol. So if I do uh, digit star, you can say you can see that I match um, the, the substring where else is not followed by a digit. Okay, so zero digits after else. Here, 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 uh, here as well, here as well, here, and uh, that's it. Then I match uh, occurrences, substrings, where else is followed by actually one digit. So it allows me to have zero digit, one digit, and then it allows me also to have more than one uh, digit. So if I can get rid of this, uh, that would be nice. There we go. If I have more than one digit here, you can see that I've accommodated up to three digits. I, I will accommodate two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, uh, and so on and so forth. Okay, there's no limit. Um, but this is a very convenient notation, much more convenient actually than that curly brace notation. So I encourage you to use it when you need to match uh, zero or more times, okay? Um, and that that is it for uh, for the basic repeating uh, patterns, regular expression repeating pattern. Now we're going to also talk about capturing groups, okay? What does it mean to capture groups? Um, well, it means that we are trying to uh, we're trying to specify, for example, that we want to repeat something. Uh, multiple time and that something is not just the last uh, the last part of the regular expression that's right after the, the repetiting pattern. So my repeating pattern here is star. I'm trying to define a group here. So to define a group I use backslash opening parenthesis and backslash closing parenthesis at the end. So I'm encompassing here my entire uh, my entire uh, regular expression here. And what I'm doing is by by defining this group and then following it by a repeating pattern, I'm expressing that I want to repeat that pattern, that entire pattern, several times. So let's take an example here. Let's say that we have else uh, three five nine, else uh, five, else uh, nine, uh, all in a row. Okay, I'm setting the five. Let's try to match this. So you can see here that. Because I have this pattern repeating zero to n time, okay, n being arbitrary large, I am matching a bunch of lines that do not have the pattern at all. But that's okay because I, I specified here I wanted to repeat it starting at zero time. So repeating the pattern zero time means it's not there, right? So it is indeed not here, not here, not here, not here, not here, not here, and not here. And then I'm, s I'm repeating one times the pattern. So I'm matching else followed by one digit. And then you can see here that I'm matching again else followed by one digit, but in the same line, I'm matching else followed by two digits, okay? So that means that here I have two matches, one that is exactly the same type of match, you know, with the pattern repeated one time, same type of match as the previous line, and then another match here that corresponds to this pattern being uh, successively uh, occurring two times, and I could have three times and so on and so forth. If I specify something like here, uh, if I specify a repeating pattern using the curly braces, and I say I want to see that pattern, uh, let's say at least one time, okay? Then there we go. I got rid of all those instances where the pattern occurred uh, zero times. Now you see for the else uh, three five nine, else five, else nine, 
uh, I may want actually to change my pattern here if I want to match that whole word here by saying that uh, I'm going to have else followed by one or more digits and this is where you can see now that um, that uh, regular expression can become quite unreadable okay can quite difficult to read they're very dense there's a lot of information per character right uh, every single character matters so what I'm doing here is I'm trying to add a repeating pattern after digit so I go right after digit and you saw me uh, open the, the repeating pattern and close it immediately why do I do this to make sure that at any time in point um, my opening and closing uh, whether it's curly brace parentheses square bracket are matching and then I go right in the middle here and I specify how many times I want to repeat things okay for example here going to say one to three time okay uh, by typing things this way you kind of mitigate uh, the, the fact that you are going to most likely at some point have unmatching uh, curly braces or parentheses so you're trying to avoid this by having a good uh, approach to typing your your regular expression okay I really recommend it because it's really painful to try to debug um, a regular expression it's really painful to try to find out where you have been matching, you know, mismatching something, especially imagine a regular expression like this one that would be three lines long. Um, yes, you are in a, you are going to be probably better off rewriting it from scratch and using a piece of paper to track step by step your design than trying to just look at the regular expression itself on the terminal and try to find the, ma the mismatch, uh, curly brace or whatnot. So here, there we go. Uh, so let's see how that works. Okay, first line, else two else two means that we have else very good followed by one digit so we repeated that pattern one time and then uh, this whole pattern else followed by one digit was repeated only one time second line we have else followed by three digits so this pattern here was repeated okay I mean this pattern was else followed by repeated uh, digit three time and then we repeated that pattern a second time where it was now else followed by one digit so the digit pattern was repeated only one time in the second part and in the third part because we repeated the whole pattern a third time it was else followed by one digit again so the digit pattern sub pattern was repeated only one time and then the examples uh, the two last examples are similar to the first one okay so not interesting but this one here is really interesting because you can see that I have said pretty much repeat uh, one or more times this pattern and each time I repeat the pattern because I have here again a choice in how many times I repeat things uh, inside that, that, that sub pattern I can repeat actually the digit one time two times or three times okay this is these are the choice I have so when I say repeat a pattern n times when I say here you know repeat this pattern uh, one or more time that doesn't mean that every uh, every time I repeat the pattern it has to have the same number of digits no every time I repeat the pattern uh, because the pattern says I can have one to three digits I can have three digits the first time then one I could have two etc okay so very important to understand this all right so <coughs> sorry this this actually gives us one of the first usage of capturing groups okay so between parentheses, I capture a group, I identify a sub-regular expression actually in my large regular expression as being a group and then I can use a repeating uh, pattern to say I want that group to occur multiple times. There is another use actually to this, uh, to this syntax which we are going to explore now. Uh, Sometimes you will have in a file things that you want to detect that are of the form uh, else, else, else. Okay, so the same pattern, the same exact pattern, you know, repeated three times. Uh, let's be even more specific than that. Else five, else five, else five. Okay, and then I'm going to have a line that is else three, else three, else three. Okay, and I'm going to t t keep my original here as well. Else, else, else. Okay, so let's try. Let's try to see what we can do with uh, with those patterns. So grab data file. Okay, and I'm going, actually I'm going to use the, the previous pattern, why not? Uh, I have else here, okay, so I know already what it does when I match this. Now, I want, if I want to match three else in a, in a way, that's relatively easy, right? Else, 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 okay. Um, I could also say, if I want to use uh, the syntax that I've learned here, that I want to repeat it 
one, two, three times. Actually, I want to repeat it three times. Okay, and I want to uh, specify that this is my um, this is my group. All right, perfect. So I I don't have to do it the silly way, you know, of typing like three times or fifty times. Else, I can just repeat it. Now this is great uh, for um, else else else. But what uh, what about when I have else? Uh, what was it? Three, I think, right? Well, I can specify the three here. I can specify the five. Uh, but I can also say that I want right here, okay, a digit. So if I specify this, okay, what I'm saying is that I want to repeat three time else followed by a digit. And it's great here because it repeats else five, you know, three times. It repeats else three, three times. However, I could also have here else three, five, five. Okay. What happens if I try to apply this pattern to to my text now? Well, else three five five is also a valid pattern, right? Same thing. Same thing that uh, what we saw in the previous example. I repeat three times else followed by any digit. So that means five or three, and this can be repeated three times uh, in a row, and uh, the numbers may be different. So the problem now is, what if I want to say that I want to match else followed by a digit, a specific digit, and then the same digit three times? This is a little bit more complicated. And this is where the, the notion of, of a capturing group helps us a little bit. Okay, we can define a group here that is else followed by a digit. And when you define groups in a regular expression, if you read your regular expression left to right, okay, the first group you define is called group number one, the second group number two, the third group number three, and so on and so forth. Now what is interesting is that we have a syntax that allows us to say, um, I want group number n to uh, appear again at this location in the regular expression. And that's an easy syntax. It's backslash followed by a number. Okay, so let's let's put that in practice so I can illustrate exactly what it means. Like right now, I have only one group defined in this regular expression. Okay, else followed by a digit. If I put backslash one here, what I'm saying is, when you find else followed by a digit, and then again else followed by a digit, but the same digit, the same pattern that you matched here in this group. If you find the pattern you matched here in this group immediately after itself, so repeat it twice, then you have a match. Okay? So in this case, there's a group, this pattern here, sub pattern matched else five. And then backslash one said, whatever you matched here, I want to see it again. So else five, else five is fine. Else three, else three is fine. Else three, else five is not fine, but else five, else five here is fine. Okay? Uh, and obviously I can do this uh, multiple times. I can say, for example, I want to see three occurrences. And if I do this, I'm matching else5, 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 and else3, 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 but not else3, followed by else5, followed by else5. Okay? So all of these um, allow you to do different kind of repetition. Okay? And uh, this, uh, this way of actually uh, using capturing group is also going to come in handy when you use a regular expression to actually replace things in a, in a text file, okay? So you could say, uh, I want to replace, provide a regular expression. In that expression, you identify um, capture group, and then when uh, when you specify the string that's supposed to replace whatever you match, you can use those capturing group. Uh, so we are not going to be able to do that with grep because grep doesn't do replacement. But if you use uh, this in over tools that allow you to do uh, replacement with a basic regular expression, or if you use that either in your favorite programming language, uh, like Java, Python, etc., um, you will find that uh, you have a way to use actually those uh, capturing groups to uh, to write more powerful replacement uh, strings that match a certain string and then use what they, they found in the match to build up the replacement string. Okay, with that little uh, remark, additional remark, off-topic remark that concludes uh, this video. Thank you for watching.